Hello, hello, friends. Finally, <laughs> getting this review filmed. I had hoped to do my whole setup that I'm going to do for live streams. I'm having software issues, just all things. Anyway, finally getting a chance to do my little review of the Picket Fence Studios paper pouncers. Now, if you've been watching my recent videos, I have been using these in quite a few videos. I've been, you know, testing them out and playing with them and all the things. So, having been giving them a good go, plan to continue using them, hence me doing the review. So, these were sent to me by Picket Fence. Don't have to do the review, just choosing to do one, give an idea behind them, all the sorts of things. Thought I'd make a card while I was at it. Uh, yeah, they come in a set of nine, the rainbow set. And then there is a neutral set with gray, brown, black. My only uh, request, I guess I would say, because I don't consider it necessarily draw it, is I, I would like a set of like white or more than one white for one for white pigment ink, I think would be awesome, as well as one then and then one I could use with like clear embossing ink, because especially embossing ink white pigment ink as well. I don't like using those with like brushes, those sorts of things. Anyway, let's, let's, let's get into like what these are. So they come in the set. They're super cute. So for someone like me, I am all about the rainbow cuteness, everything. Um, so yeah, I haven't yet figured out where I'm going to put these because as always I'm running out of space, but this will fit on like a little shelf, etc. But I do actually like that they're contained like this in their own containers. So this is what they are. You got a little handle. It's got a, I wouldn't call this like, it's a dense sponge, but it's hard to explain the type of sponge. I know some people have been saying like makeup sponges. Honestly, if my makeup sponges were this, cause like I have like the beauty blenders, it's not like that. But I, I almost, I'm tempted. It's like, hmm, I'm tempted to just, you know, get one, use it for makeup. Cause the type of sponge is just, it's different. It's very, very smooth. It's got mostly a flat, you can kind of see it like that, you know, mostly flat top. And with picket fence, the whole, reason they came out with these and Nicole, you know, source the sponges, etc., is these are not blending tools. That's why they're called pouncers. They're not meant for blending. They're meant to apply ink in a pouncing motion. Biggest number one reason is for people with mobility issues, arthritis, that sort of a thing. So when I first was told about these, I was like, okay, and I, and I was like, I, I kind of get it, but I was like, you know, people can just use their brushes kind of, but then once I actually got them in my hands and then I've been using them, I was like, I get it now. I actually, I genuinely really like these and I understand with uh, mobility issues and stuff. Cause like the, the motion of holding a brush and also like having to rotate your arm to do blending with traditional either brushes or um, like the distress these I have one right here the distress blending foams like that sort of a thing you need to use you know pressure and more movement now do these replace everything no I still am going to use my brushes and have and will um my blending foams I think I'm not planning on getting rid of them yet people were also asking how these compare to the domed ones I'm not going to compare them in this video I have the domed foams I don't use them <laughs> I got them and I just haven't got into them. It's not this, it's definitely not the same type of foam. And it's also, again, not the same idea. The domed foams that Ranger has released for their blending tools, um, it's the same idea still. It's, you know, meant for blending. So you're using the, the domed foam is just supposed to give a little bit of a smoother blend than the flat sponges. But domed foams from Ranger still meant for blending, which these are not. 
these are, you know, pouncing. Now, can you, you know, jury rig your own sorts of things, get some sponges? Sure. If that works for you and you're happy with it, that's great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm legit happy with these. I like, and I do, I like the little rainbow containers. <laughs> I like it. It's easy for me to just grab and go. I use the little like lid. That's again, you guys see me use I get in the process. I just stick it in there cleaning these. It is not recommended that you get these wet. I just, I just by feeling them, I'm like, I think if you like actually put these in water, they'll get to be like, you know, enormous, like any general sponge is going to do. And I don't know if it would like ever come back to the original size. Cause most of the time, like, you know, a lot of sponges, the minute you fully saturate them, they never go back. So one, it isn't recommended that you wash them. They do say you can just use like a piece of paper towel or a cloth. I've tried both. I've done the cloth. I've also, you can lightly mist it with water and you just kind of, again, tap and dab to remove any ink. Right now, like these will stain, obviously. All the ones I've been using, I think I've used every single one so far. Yeah, they've all got ink on them. Not a big deal. The only times I will really pay attention to what's on the foam is, you know, I've got what looks like really, you know, a lot of dark ink and I want to go, you say a, a really light purple. I'll just make sure that there's not actually ink sitting here. So I'll just take, you know, my scrap. There's nothing there, you know, so you're good to go. So just like my brushes, I don't clean these at all. I just good to go. The other thing that is recommended and all companies recommend this with whether it's these blending brushes etc is having separate ones between um dye based inks and pigment inks so like your oxides versus your regular distress inks or regular dye inks uh the only reason companies do that is because you can pick up you know, you're, you're dabbing this in your oxide ink pad and then you go to use a regular distress ink. You can mix the pigments from those oxides or pigment ink pads into your regular dye ink pads. So there's a chance you can start wrecking your ink pads. Again, it's personal preference. I do that though with my blending brushes. I have separate sets. I have a separate set of blending brushes for my oxides and then a set for dye inks. With these, I do plan on getting another, I'm gonna get another set and I'm just gonna mark, I think maybe with a Sharpie or something. And I'll just label them so that they are for oxide inks. Because again, I'm not really hung up on like really taking the time to clean. But also I will say you probably can, you know, use one in your oxide inks. And then if you wipe it off, it would be fine. It's just recommended because if a person does wreck their ink pad, they can't go back and be like, I was told that this was okay. That's why, you know? So for me, I, you know, I do this as a job, so I'm going to get another set just cause, just cause. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, the whole point of these is to be able to add ink without having to do a lot of movement as well as being able to add ink to like die cuts and things. And that is the biggest thing for me is how you're able to add ink and like with a brush no matter what you've got to move the brush and some wafer die cuts you know have little really delicate little areas those sorts of things and you just got to be extra careful but when you're using one of these you can just pounce it and that's what I was like oh I like <laughs> so I will link at the end of this um like I said I've done a few videos just playing around with them etc um I've been really liking using them to add yeah ink to die cuts I was using them to lay down a little bit of a base onto backgrounds I've used them over stencils that was the one thing I didn't think would really work very well um was delicate stencils and then I tested it out and did in one of my videos and I thought for this one and of course I forgot to cut this package open 
This is an older stencil, but I kind of went through my like picket fence stash and I found this is the hexagon randomness, they call it. And it's got like really little, little areas in the background. So I'll come back to this in a second. Got some cardstock here. I have that. And then I wanted to add, um, let's do a little bit of purple. Why not? Let's do some seedless preserves. So nice thing too, again, with these and stencils is because you're doing the pouncing motion and not a brush you don't need to hold your stencil as much and and with certain stencils especially ones like say if it's like straight lines you know that you got to use pixie spray everything and I've shown with brushes how you want to go in the direction of the stencil because otherwise you know the pieces of the stencil move around etc um I was like oh oh love love this for it so same idea it's just you can pounce it and it'll get into the small little areas and then as the ink um like as you pounce the ink whatever's still left it just kind of fades and that was another thing I was like oh I'm really liking that these like again they're not meant for blending so I won't use these if I want to do just a solid ink see and it gets all the little detail if I wanted to do like a solid ink blended background this is not what I'm going to reach for you can do it it won't you won't get as much blending between colors you can if you know you work it kind of back and forth so like say you go purple to blue to whatever so you can like add your ink and then back and forth but really when it comes to doing like a solid ink blended background that's where the brushes really come into play but yeah you can still add ink with these I just wouldn't use them for full blended backgrounds. But on a recent video, I did use um, the pouncers and I was like, just kind of laying down color and I layered a couple colors, but it was more just to add that bit of color without actually creating a solid background with them. So yeah, they work great. I quite enjoy them. I am going to get, like I said, a couple or another set for my oxides etc and then I'm very much hoping I've been pestering <laughs> I've been pestering them I was like I'd like another set of neutrals and then my other request would be I think it'd be kind of nice I want to test these out with my metallic inks um I just I don't want to because again I don't want to wash these so you guys will just have to stay tuned I'm either just going to get another set and mark it or I've been pestering for that too like a little metallic set would be great like a metallic gold a metallic silver um and a white would be great and maybe clear anyway but I would like to test these with my metallic inks because I don't like I will not use blending brushes with those inks it's the nature of metallic inks are just the way they work you know, but I was like, oh, one of these with metallic inks to pounce onto like die cuts, backgrounds. Oh, ho, ho. I got, mm. yeah. So I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I am biased. I am biased. I will like one, like I said, these were sent to me, but I'm also biased. I really like Picket Fence Studios. I have um, like guested for them and uh, promoted their products for years now I can't even remember how many years it's been so for that I am a little biased but I genuinely like these and if I didn't I wouldn't be doing this video so I wanted to do just a really simple background and before we go back into the actual um pouncing and whatnot I, I want to add let's add a little bit of like splatter to this so it can dry while I am doing everything else. So I did seedless preserves on top of this stencil and then we'll do some seedless preserves oxide spray. 
Because like I said, might as well do a card while I'm here. So let's stick that in my splat box. All the oxide sprays, you always want to shake them up like really, really, really well. And this one has sat for a long time. I can't even remember the last time I used this. So let's just shake that up really, really good. And then let's just add, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. We'll set that aside to dry. And then let's finish this little die cut I was doing. So this is the Picket Fence uh, Soar Butterfly Wafer Die. And I'd started with Salvage Patina. So let's add a little bit more to that. And I've done, I've also done, um, like I've just worked on my glass mat with die cuts. It just makes more of a mess. I've used my, you know, sticky mats. I've shown that to hold the die cuts and then I pounce the ink. Either one works. Again, that's kind of the nice thing with these is since you're not moving, you're not doing the blending motion, you're not using a brush, you're not moving, you know, the die cut around constantly. Like you're just, so again, main reason or thought process behind these is for those um, with more limited mobility. You know, it's, we're all getting older. <laughs> starts happening you know the arthritis starts setting in that sort of a thing as well as things like um different disabilities uh one of my fellow crafters basically crafts like one-handed so because of like an injury things like that so it's like they can't do all the things so these help a ton so anything that helps people out and allows them to keep you know enjoying making and creating I'm all for it you know it's it makes me happy because I just that that's something that like I think about you know as as we're all getting older and I'm like oh I don't even know what I would do if I had to stop making you know like I love what I do and it would really suck so yeah all the tools that more and more companies are coming out with that, you know, are designed to make things a little bit easier, to make things work a little bit smoother, to make it more accessible for people. I'm all for it. So now I'm using uh, prize ribbon, Distress Ink, and just pouncing that on. And just like I do regardless, of what tool I'm using or what even I'm specifically doing, I always go the lighter ink to the darker ink. You know, so I started with my lighter ink and then I go on to my darker ink just because. And, and then, like I said, if I want next time I use this, if I want to use um, not so intense of a shade of blue, I'll just make sure, you know, that there's not a bunch of ink sitting on here like for as stained as they get they don't absorb a lot of ink and that's another thing that's different between this sort of a tool and this sort of tool um because like my blend the blending tools from ranger these work better the more you the more you use them the more you saturate the foam it makes a huge difference it takes a little bit in the beginning when you get a new foam etc but the more you saturate it, it just blends better, you know, and you load up the tool really good and you do your blending and it's wonderful. That is not how these work. You do not want to saturate these. The ink sits more on the surface. Again, some will, some will get in there. It's going to stain. That's fine. But most of the ink is sitting right on top. So again, just different tools for different things. And yeah i i love it i love them so i want to add just again go back with a little bit of the salvage patina 
just intensify that a little bit. And then for the center and like the body of this butterfly, let's do some black. So we've got, and then I thought what I could do is that. So put a little bit of, in fact, I can go like that. And then I can even go an extra little step here and just kind of that part of it and then the rest of it I'm not too worried about this I'm just gonna do like that if you really wanted to get finicky you could like mask off I'm not too worried about that although again the more I've been playing with these and using them I was like smaller ones would be kind of kind of cool oh that reminds me welcome to my product reviews I'm all over the place um, people are probably going to ask, how do these compare to sponge daubers? Completely different, uh, foam. Those little sponge daubers, totally different foam. I'm not a fan of those. I haven't used them in years. I have a set somewhere in a drawer. I don't even know where they are, so I'm not going to bring them out to compare them because I can't find them. But the foam is completely different. And same thing for a lot of people, like for my friend, uh, Ricky, shout out to Bromero Cards. Um, he can't, like, he, his hands are too big. He can't fit those sponge daubers on his fingers. I think it was him, Ricky, if it wasn't you. I just remember someone mentioning that, and I was like, yeah, for a lot of people, they, they can't. And because they're even smaller than this, so if you can't fit your finger in them, for a lot of people, it's that, again, it's that needing to hold something so small that gets a little iffy. But totally different foam, totally different idea. But you can do similar things with them. Like if you want to dab, it'll just take you a little bit longer. So if you've already got a good set of um, the little finger daubers, try it out. You know, it might not be as smooth. It might take a little bit longer. But if it works for you, that's great. You know, and it is nice for, you know, if you want to get into smaller areas. You can kind of with this, like if you really wanted to smush. But again, that's getting a little um difficult like for some being able to like press might be difficult but it can be done but i'm not i'm not too concerned about it so yeah i am really loving them for adding ink like it just blends you know it's just seamless and i really really love it so i've got my butterfly. I kind of had a rough idea of what I was going to do with this. I'm all over the place. And then I also die cut some of these little butterflies. And I'll have links like I always do um, in the description box below the video. I'll have a blog post, etc. Because this was a separate set. I just die cut the little, the little butterflies from scraps of white cardstock. So let's kind of pull some of these out and then these little dudes we can do with we'll do the salvage patina and that's one of the main reasons why I love these it's so much faster and little when it's little tiny die cuts either you can just pounce the scrap first then die cut it or depending, sometimes I, I almost roll it instead of like pouncing up and down like this. I'll just kind of roll the tool just so it's not because sometimes some of these little tiny die cuts, sometimes they want to almost stick to the foam. So yeah, love it for this. So much faster than a blending brush. So much faster. 
so we'll do those ones let's do some blue ones so we've got some butterflies let's do a sentiment we do the sentiment. There we go. Love it. Love it. Okay, so then I've got another panel here. Let's quickly add just a little bit more stenciling to this background. This is going to go on the inside of my card, so I don't want to add. Um, I don't want to add as much. Just kind of go lightly. It's also going to depend um, what types of ink you're using. Whether or not your ink pads have re been re-inked, the pressure, like if you want more solid, intense ink, um, your the pressure you use, you can also build it up though, because if you can't apply a lot of pressure, you know, mobility issues, that sort of a thing. Um, re-inking your ink pads helps if they're getting dry. Like a lot of my distress inks are getting a little dry. I need to do some maintenance and sit and refill them. So that would make a difference too. But I've been finding as I've been playing with these more and more that I can just build up the intensity. You know, I just kind of go over the same areas, you know, several times and it does the trick. So it, it will depend on your ink pads, the ink you're using, the pressure, all the things. But I do love that I can get like really, really light areas and just like fade it out, you know. And then by using lighter pressure, I won't get all the little detail, but that's okay. But if I want to get the detail, you can kind of get in there and do that. So, and then I can go back and with whatever ink is kind of left on the pouncer, I can just kind of pounce it onto here and add just a little bit of color. And these are all, this one is the um, five by seven double stitched layering rectangle dies. That's what I die cut this, uh, the white panels of cardstock. And then this hello sentiment is from that same wafer die set. That's going to go on the inside. This is the piece for the outside with all of its texture added to it with the oxide spray and then this butterfly wafer die also has an outline which is perfect i'm only going to add adhesive just to the body the rest of it i want to leave as is And then we can pop this onto our five by seven card base. Alrighty, let's just add a little bit of bling while we're at it. We can add some of these little, little heart embellishments because they are super cute even some purple ones so we can add a few of those alrighty there's my finished little five by seven card just like so 
Like I mentioned earlier, I will have links below the video. I'll have a link to my blog post with the picture links. I'll link to everything I showed. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. As always, I'm just filming stream of conscious. <laughs> so who knows? I probably missed key elements I should have shared with you guys. But as of doing this um, and playing with these for the last uh, couple of weeks or however long it's been, I am a fan. I am going to purchase more for myself or another set for myself and then fingers crossed um, I've mentioned this in other videos like I like to pester some of the brands that I work with like hmm it'd be really nice if we had such and such <laughs> so yeah I've been pestering them about I would like a set of like metallics I would like a set of um, white ones Either a couple, like a set of white, like like the neutrals. Yeah, because you have gray, brown, and black. I would love like either three white ones or like a couple white ones and a clear one would be wonderful. Anything. Because then I would love to have one, yeah, for white pigment ink. One for clear embossing ink. Again, I didn't show that with these because I did just, I, I don't want to mess up my, my tools. Because I'm using them and I really like them. <laughs> but I've, I've heard other makers using, um, you know, Versamark ink embossing ink with these and the results are really good because again embossing ink can get finicky and you I don't do not want to apply embossing ink with a brush it's just too thick of an ink but to use it with a tool like this especially like if you want to use a stencil put embossing ink over it and then you could use you know your glitter embossing powders things like that I think that could be a lot of fun like I just I have so many ideas so that is my review and a card bundled into one. Like I mentioned, links will be below. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting, all of it. It genuinely helps. I know I joke about the robot overlords all the time, but it's true. My entire job is ruled by like robots, algorithms, all the things, and it's just is what it is but you guys you know taking the time to watch my videos for thumbs upping and the commenting subscribing etc it really helps and i very much appreciate it and yeah i'll see you all very soon in the next one